The Happy Jacks RPG Podcast, a roundtable discussion that's a mix of friendship, humor, unbridled enthusiasm, and tabletop RPG topics sent in from around the world. Just for another Hello! Hi. Welcome to the Happy Jacks RPG Podcast. Season 31, Episode 5. My name is Kimmy. I'm Kadeem. And I am Adam. <laughs> and I made it this week. You did. And I didn't even <laughs> remind you. It's very I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> I was on top of it. Playing it fast and loose with, right. will Adam show up without a right? reminder? Who knows? <laughs> In today's episode, <laughs> Batman talks about the science of evil creatures. No relation. Yeah. Kurt from... <laughs> Kurt from Alaska writes in. Okay, that was very good. <laughs> Kurt from Alaska write, writes in about running TTRPGs for people new to the hobby and a school club of 44, yes, 44 kids. And Jolene has some advice about safety tools and a reminder for us. If you'd like to contribute a question or topic to the show, you can email us at happyjacksrpg at gmail.com. That's happyjacksrpg at gmail.com. Uh, we're doing a little bit better for emails. I appreciate all of you who like heeded the call. The, you know, beacons were lit and you started writing in emails. I appreciate it, but we could use some more, uh, especially some variety because we have some very uh, verbose friends, as you will see in this email, who wrote many, which is great. But unless we want like all Kurt from Alaska episodes, which I'm not necessarily against. Right. Yeah. But we need a little bit of variety. So yeah. we, could, we could use some more emails if you want to write in some emails. All right. So. November Indie Designer of the Month is Christina Stone Bush, yeah. you know, aka Hive Mind, a fantastic LGBT uh, tabletop RPG designer who has worked on some great projects as a professional freelancer, and her personal work can be found at Hive Mind. That's two Y's, right where you think they will be, <laughs> and dot itch dot io. Uh, just for clarifying, that's H Y V E M Y N D because I have no idea where you thought the Y's went. And <laughs> this week we're spotlighting her solo journaling game, Thirst. So last week we talked about Hunger, which is from the vampire's point of view, mm -hmm. and it's based on blackjack. So you draw cards to like, and you have to decide if you're going to draw another card, if you're going to, so it's about, Ew. yeah, it's very like about like, I don't know, like the tense, like, are you, aren't you, yeah. how far are you going to go? It's about you feeding for the first time on your human lever. Thirst is the flip side of that. So you are the human with a vampire lever, and tonight is the night they will feed from you for the first time. Um, and the game fits on one side of a, is on one side of a business card, and all you need to play the game is paper, writing utensils, and a deck of cards. And this is the companion game to Hunger. And uh, in her interview that we did with her, I asked her specifically about these two games and designing them. Um, so this is her answer to the question, like, you know, how did you make these two games that sound very similar so like feel different because they're from very different points mm -hmm. of view? And this is her answer. I just thought I'd like drop it in here. Your Patreon, you can read the whole interview. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I pretty much knew I was going to make Thirst while I was still writing Hunger. The tricky part was I didn't want them to be the same game. I wanted them to be similar and to use similar components, but Thirst just couldn't be Blackjack again. Both games are about power and consent. Hunger is about having power but possibly losing control of it, while Thirst is about trusting someone to give them power over you. Once I boiled it down to that basic statement, the idea of having to lay, uh, lay out face down cards in Thirst, a representation of how much you trust your partner, made more sense. Writing it out like that makes it seem easy. It wasn't. Even though I know I was going to make it, it took me a long time to hit up on the idea for Thirst. Hunger had gotten a lot of praise, and I felt a lot of pressure to get it right. Mm. So I think that's super just mm -hmm. great game design, thinking about like the flip side and how it all works together and... I'm just fascinated with like yeah. the mechanics of both of these games. Yeah. So, again, if you're interested in checking that out, you can go to hivemind.itch.io and uh, check out all of Christina's games. Hmm. So, yeah. thank you for clarifying the whys. Yes. At one point, I was in an <laughs> RPG and somebody said, "So it's like a zombie with a Y," and another player responded, "So like a zombie." <laughs> <laughs> So 
So <laughs> what? <laughs> so it's important. You never know where you one never might know crop up. Where someone's gonna put their why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Christina's third game, <laughs> Zimby. <laughs> You just throw cards at a person until it hits them where you think they're going to be. <laughs> Did I hit it? Did I hit it? Did I hit it? I'm sorry. Christina would design a much better game than that. That's not a game she would design. All right. Ricky G's favorite RPG. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Oh, it's here. Uh. Um... Some announcements. Um, we have some new actual plays starting, coming up very soon. Um, my One Ring game is going to do Session Zero next Tuesday. It won't actually be on Tuesday nights, but because of the holiday next week, people's, people's schedules are a little bit wild. So we're going to do Session Zero on Tuesday, and from moving on, we're going to skip the next month? I don't know. Look at the schedule. Happy Jacks at <laughs> slash schedule. It will be there. Um, and we'll be actually playing that game on Monday nights, though. It's supposed to be the next Monday. So the next, okay, good. I have a lot in my head. Like I just finished. <laughs> I did. I did fourteen parent teacher conferences today. Oh my god! Afternoon. <laughs> that it has to be mind numbing. It, it's very hard. Yeah, soul crushing. Yeah, like I, I just. I've had so many very kind, critical conversations today. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm sorry. What time is it? How much have I drunk? How much caffeine have I had? Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's starting up, and I feel mm -hmm. no pressure to. Prove to everybody how much I know about Tolkien based on emails you've written in, texts I've gotten, tweets I've gotten. It'll be fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. How are you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the other game that started up, um, they've done session zero already, but it is Heaven on High, which is our um, City of Mist game, which will be on Fridays at, actually, it's going to be at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and it's from a, it will be a remote game with a bunch of our amazing friends on it and just like watching their session zero and their character creation is going to be really amazing. Cool. And Lloyd is running like his first game for Happy Jacks, and it's he's going to be so good. I loved. I played in one of his games at JackerCon, and I was just like, "You need to be on our show." <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, so you've just been you, you've brought been brought in. Like yeah. I'm not sure if it was, he was completely willing, but he said yes. So, you know, consent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. So very very exciting. Consent is consent. It is. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they're starting... Um, Without a why. Right. <laughs> no whys. No whys and consent. <laughs> I feel like there's like something deep there. No whys and consent. But yeah. I feel like oh. not quite. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I might just be really tired. <laughs> just let it rattle around a while. We'll yeah, it'll, it'll pop yeah, up. Yeah. It'll be great. I feel and like then... that's going to be the next dating app. Consent with a why. Consent with a why. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's definitely. Right. Yeah, hey, definitely. Web yeah. 2.0, putting stupid letters in places is bullshit. Right. Yeah. And I just want to tell you, like, I went through this week and I updated our beautiful crew page on the on the website. I love us. It's so nice that, like seeing everybody like they're all everyone's beautiful faces. And it's just like, I love my friends. Yeah. And it's very cool. So if you want to go see that beautiful page, you can go to happyjacks.org slash crew because... And just see how cool everybody yeah. is. Because I, I know a lot of very cool people, and they're nice enough to let me put their faces on my webpage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I probably need updated photos now that I have evolved into my final form of middle-aged lesbian art professor. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah. So. Mine's from a while ago. It's from... Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yeah. I know. I look good. I'll keep it. I haven't changed a lot of my pictures on things because it's from back when I had lost like 50 pounds, like before COVID. So now I'm like, oh, I like my new look, but sure would like to get rid of those 50 pounds or so <laughs> again. Yeah. I just also like haven't taken pictures in, during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't actually have a lot of updated photos of any type that aren't like family gatherings where I'm mm -hmm. like with my baby or my husband or my mom. And I'm like, that's not really appropriate for the happy yeah. jacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Although my baby's cute. She's not a baby anymore. She's a toddler. But so cute. So cute. My God. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right. I think that's good. <laughs> I think we've been talking about stuff. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, check out happyjacks.org slash schedule. Those games will be coming up and you can watch them live. They'll also be on the YouTube and they'll also be released on our podcast feed. So very exciting. I'm very excited about all those games. Any other? Any, any, any mm -hmm. Are you good? Good? Okay. No. Oh. Email? Oh, I am. Oh, oh I, I would like to 
cross my mode a little bit. Um, I am currently in a game uh, on a channel called Emporium for the Wayward Gamer. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we play, uh, we're playing a Star Wars game uh, called Shadowport Adventures. Uh, luck of the draw on Sunday afternoons. Cool. Um, and so, so feel free to come check me out over there. It's at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So, but yeah. And Bill Roper is also in it. Nice. So, yeah. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. And I always tell them, like, come over to Happy Jacks. And <laughs> so, yeah. So sharing the, the love. Motion. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. All right. Mailbag number yeah. one. Number one. <laughs> Who would like to read that? Shall I go? Can read Batman. Okay. Read I yeah. I'll read Batman. Well, I mean, it's appropriate. I guess. <laughs> Hi there, Happy Jacks crew. <laughs> Reaching out from the rain spattered waste of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I cannot keep yeah, that. Yeah, don't up. do that part. It's really bad for your, <laughs> yeah, your right, voice. Yeah. Uh, reaching out from the rain-spattered wastes of the Pacific Northwest. Just today, while listening on two separate podcasts, I heard both tried to address the concept of evil races in role-playing games. While there can be no doubt that early D&D &D was filled with tropes and stereotypes that are undeniably sexist, colonialist, offensive, and racist, yes, they were, and the debate over evil races and how any race of sentient beings can be considered evil has led to some significant controversy online. First off, I have to say that the word race is not the right term to use here. Thank you. So I'm going to stick to the words like species to refer to entirely different sentient groups like elves and orcs or cultures when referencing groupings that may occur within a species such as followers of the god corn. Um... As a biologist, the concept of evil in my mind is, is a value judgment strictly tied to human culture and behavior. There are, however, many behaviors that and attributes that exist in the natural world today, which, when applied to any an entire given sentient culture, would likely lead to a state of constant conflict, war, and likely the label evil being applied to them by others whom they had conflict with. If birds could talk, I'm sure they would have some choice words about house cats. But I digress. Please continue to digress in another email because this is this is right at my alley. <laughs> Deities tied to entire fantasy cultures who drive their followers to heinous acts are likely one of the primary fantasy reasons for undeniably evil fantasy species. Tolkien's Melkor, who created the orcs and goblins, is a great example of an evil entity who created his followers to be the enemy of dwarves, elves, and man. This seems like one of the most obvious reasons that an intelligent species or culture could be easily labeled as evil. The whole premise is tied to the acceptance that concepts like good and evil exist in the first place, and wanton destruction is often viewed as an evil act. So deities like Melkor and Korn are examples of gods whose followers are labeled as evil because they value destruction. This, of course, all depends on your point of view. Who knows what a fighting Urukai thought of elves or corn berserkers feel about humans? I'm gonna like pause for just a second. This is actually one of the few things that I kind of liked about Rings of Power. Uh huh. Uh, there's part where it's like, you know, you spend some of your time with the orcs and the leader of the orcs. Who I won't talk too much about it for spoilers, yeah. but uh, you find out like one of the reasons they're trying to, um, like, like get things to to be all dark and like Mordori mm -hmm. um, is because of their sensitivity to sunlight. Right. Which made total sense. You're like, oh, you don't want to just make everything evil because you're evil. It's like, oh, you have right. this light sensitivity. You literally can't walk around outside during the day unless you like fuck shit up and make like this right. giant like cloud Good global cloud, warming right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, like I can, I can get behind that. That suddenly made sense to me because even, even with like they follow Melkor. You're like, cool. Right. That seems like great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like they just uh, destroy things to yeah. destroy. Because like Did... it's like, what's the end game? Like you just destroy everything, and then you just like yeah. right. Is there no orc the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is there no orc going? What has Melkor done for me lately? You right. know? Or like, what are we supposed to do after we destroy everything? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that it was like them making that choice because it made it more livable for them. Yeah. Was a very clear, like, understandable motivation. Yeah, and it also it it makes them more interesting and yeah. and makes makes them uh gives them a reason and a purpose that is not just that's not the same as humanizing them or trying to make them sympathetic. Yeah. Right. So like you can you can 
uh, which is another problem I have with a lot of treatments of villains these days is they're like, well, let's turn them into antiheroes and make them sympathetic. And it's like, no, sometimes you really still want bad guys because yeah. there are really actual bad people out there. Yeah, so. sometimes Black Adam is actually just supposed to be a villain. It's like, <laughs> just supposed to be a villain. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right, right. Um, no. have to get specific. Uh, by the way, I I was watching uh, watching last week's advice show last night, mm-hmm. and I was really sad that I did miss the um, the the discussion of Rings of Power because I had a lot of <laughs> so interesting similar things. Yeah, yeah. but um, but yeah, I, I was I was like, oh, I want to talk about that with Kimmy. So we need to sit and have ciders and talk for several hours. Um, but yeah. Um, Soon. Soon, yes. Um, TM. <laughs> right. Soon, TM. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Beyond deities, there are many potential real-world reasons that a sentient culture or species could be labeled as evil. Conflicts over limited resources are common amongst members of the animal kingdom, as well as in human culture today. Some species are int- extremely territorial, which leads to immediate conflicts between neighboring groups. Hippos are a great example of this. <laughs> They are herbivores, yet they kill and attack people all the time who are in their territory. Goblins could be very territorial, too. A growing population of orcs would likely see humans as a weaker competitor and seek to drive them off so as to secure more resources for themselves. Species may also be heavily influenced by their own biology. Orcs, for example, have pointed teeth, as do many of the quote-unquote evil races in fantasy and science fiction games. Pointed teeth are typically found in predatory species, and being a predator could affect the psychology of the individual. Humans are omnivores, so we have no idea what the sociological or psychological impact of being a strict predator might have on a fantasy culture. We can only imagine. Maybe humans and elves are delicious and seem weak to orcs, making peace extremely difficult. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, 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 pigs are delicious. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry. If we got into a war with cows, (laughs) it would be be a problem. Right? Yeah. I would definitely be a bad guy. I'm sorry, but I'm going to be evil and eat bacon, and especially if it's on a hamburger. Mm -hmm. Uh, Finally... (laughs) Just uh, You say finally, but then there's three more paragraphs. I question you, sir. Um, <laughs> finally, just because a fantasy race is sentient does not mean that its psychology is anything like our own. There is absolutely no reason why we should expect other sentient species to behave or follow the same norms as our own. Ding, 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 ding. Human values like compassion may not exist at all for a species like an orc. Hostile sentient races might also have xenophobic or specious feelings towards each other. Modern man is certainly no slouch in this area, treating those who are different as bad and applying labels to them. Hostile or alien species may not have any of the same responses to simuli that we as humans do. I know applying science to fantasy is a ridiculous pursuit. However, we apply what we know about the real world in a fantasy setting every time we engage with it. Plants are green and found growing above ground. Gravity ordinarily exists and its lack is due to magic. And the sky usually has stars and moons. In my own games, I allow my knowledge of science to affect how I cast various hostile species. Goblins, for example, in my games, not unlike most other fantasy RPGs, are nocturnal cave dwellers. To this end, they have pallid, translucent white skin, crisscrossed by networks of blue veins, enormous pink eyes adapted to life hunting in low-light conditions, and long, slender teeth and claws best suited for grabbing slippery prey. Their psychology is antithetical to a pacifist culture. They see others as weak for having peaceful, harmonious attitudes and seek to dominate and take what they can through brute force. There can be no peace with them since they see the resources of others as something to be taken by force and guile. These are just my thoughts on the subject. I know a lot of this discussion is tied to what I previously mentioned with regard to the obvious racist and colonialist tropes in early D&D, which the system is still struggling to step beyond. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the matter. Batman. P.S. Drink. Woohoo! Aye, aye. Mm-hmm. I do as commanded. Yeah. Um. Uh. I have so much to say about this, but I just talked a lot. Just want to to start. (laughs) Well, my thing is always, anytime I look at what's an evil culture or Mm -hmm. something that's portrayed that way in fantasy, I always try and look at it like nobody's a bad guy in their own mind. Right. Right. Yeah. Right? Like, they have different goals that some other group of people might be like, that's abhorrent. Mm -hmm. You must be evil. Well, okay, but... Our whole culture yep. is about finding, you know, 
baby animals and eating right. them, right? <laughs> right? Or whatever. Right. Like, that's your thing. Okay, yeah. well, there's a group of people that are going to think that's really horrible. Right, yeah. So, but that's just what you do. That's that's your prey animals because mm-hmm. you're small goblins. So you attack yeah. baby animals. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Because yeah. they're small and weak, yeah. like every other animal in the animal <laughs> right. kingdom. Right. That's yeah. what you try and eat yeah. first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved the comment about uh, birds having something to say about house cats. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. In my neighborhood in real life, there is an active war going on between crows and parrots. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And it is vicious. Yeah. I yeah. have seen big, like, full-on Star Wars fur balls in the sky over the house of parrots and crows dive bombing and hitting them. Yep. And then there's a couple of falcons that live somewhere in the neighborhood oh, that wow. come in and grab a bird while they're fighting. <laughs> and it's fucking mayhem. <laughs> but like, wow. clearly there is an organized attempt right. at fighting over this territory between yeah. those two yeah. types of animals. It's like elves and orcs fighting and then like a dragon just swoops in yeah, and just like, grabs a what? couple of morsels and <laughs> takes off. It's exactly... <laughs> That's amazing. The number of times I've had to get out the leaf blower to get leaf feathers <laughs> out of my yard is, is not un, an unknowable right. number. <laughs> You're just like the halfling, like, oh, I guess I'll sweep this blood out of my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, the parrots, man. The parrots, I think. Yeah. 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 I think it's interesting, too. Yeah, because I think... Um, like, I love the, like, translucent skin description. Yeah. Because that yeah. makes so much more sense. Like, right. it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, like drow are just such a terrible design for so yeah. many reasons. Right. But specifically, it's like, okay, you like you very clearly just wanted to make, you know, the, the, the bad species have dark skin. Right. Clearly, even though it makes zero sense. Right, yeah. And yeah. you're just like, okay, okay. I mean, well, because, like. I mean, it could evolutionarily but... be said that maybe it's a. a camouflage well yes except that most most underground species they do not need camouflage because yeah because they're not sensing by light and so they don't see color so you know so yeah um and and that's the only reason i think like because that's what i had always thought i've just heard both arguments right yeah i had always thought at first well yeah that makes sense because they hide in the shadows you know because it's the under dark and mm-hmm. it's dark and so you want to be dark so you hide yeah. but then it's like but why do they have like bright white hair um <laughs> so, yeah. yeah that's entirely fair. Yeah, yeah right and um but and yeah then, it's it, yeah go ahead i was just gonna say it's it's like one of those things that you're like okay like it feels like a 13 year old kid came up with this yeah like it's dark so you're in the dark but they're gonna have white hair, so you can still see them. You have to see them and right. kill them because they're evil, and it's just like so badly thought out. Yeah. I was watching the most recent season of Dragon Prince. Oh, uh huh, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. I watched it all on Tuesday. Like, I I wish I could say it was this week, but no, I stayed up till like two a.m. and watched the entire season because yeah. yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. But they have these really cool. So good. So good. Um, but they had these really cool monsters in one part of it. This isn't like a spoiler. Um. They're in a cave because, you know, fantasy. And there's these really cool monsters that are, um, like, designed after, um, like, anglerfish. Like, the ones that are way yeah. deep in the bottom of the ocean. Mm-hmm. And they've got, like, these cool little, like, lamp things. And at first you see them and you don't know what they are. They're like, oh, like, pretty lights. And then it's like, you see what's behind it and you're just like, oh, God, oh, it's terrifying. <laughs> Bioluminescence is a danger sign. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, no. Yeah, so good. And they're just, like, terrifying and fast yeah. moving. And you're just like, that is such a cool design. And I... <laughs> Run, run, run no. faster! Yeah. So it's such a so I love I love when you take those great um, like actual scientific things that yeah. make sense in yeah. that kind of environment or ecosystem or whatever it is, and then apply them to fantasy creatures. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I you know this this really speaks a lot to me, and I, I've thought about this issue a lot. It's it's one of my pet. Uh, thought experiments that mm-hmm. I dive into a lot in my own brain. Um, but uh, but especially, uh, like, the main thing that I, I hope everyone takes away from this is calling them species. They're not yeah. races. They're species. They are different. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know how to explain it, psych- uh, you know, scientifically, but, uh, but race essentially means very little in even in the real world, right? These are different species of people uh, or different species of creatures. And, and so, uh, you know, I think when we, when we refer to them as races, 
Um, it it's just from our own personal colonialist racist uh, culture that that insists that uh, you know races are something very fundamentally biologically different, mm-hmm. right? And and that is we know now scientifically that is absolutely not the case. Um, there is no fundamental biological difference between races of humans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so so when you start doing a game, uh, whether it's science fiction or fantasy or, or any genre, and you have these things that you're calling races when they're actually completely different species and they're biologically fundamentally different, that equates the concept of race in a false way. And, you know, so, so I really, I really love having somebody else bring this up because I think about that a lot. Um, yeah, I think, I think yeah. using the term species and then cultures is yeah, very specific. Cultures. Yeah. Cause you can have, you know, creatures of the same species who have different cultures. Right. Yeah. And, you know, be, they grew up in, or they grew up, they, they developed in different um, yeah. like places with different ecosystems and different resources. So their cultures yeah. can be very different, even if they are the same species. Right. Yeah, and as like a casual watcher of the Lord of the Rings movies, for example, uh-huh. nobody understands the difference between Urukai and the orcs, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like the casual yeah. moviegoer, that's yeah. like right. cool fantasy movie we're gonna watch. Yeah, they're like, oh, horrible monster man. All yeah. right, cool, they're bad guys, <laughs> and they run yeah. with it. But like, it's cultures of a very similar, yeah, you know, branches of the same sort of species, right? Yeah. Kind of a thing, right? Yeah, and. Yeah, nerds like us understand the differences, mm-hmm. but yeah. the average person went to the movies. They're like, okay, well, that guy put white paint on his face. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we remember white paint guy. Oh right? yeah, oh yeah, oh god, yeah. the guys with the white paint—they understand restaurants. Yeah, and the <laughs> others don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> But actually, like um, Tolkien, yeah, right. Tolkien and Middle Earth is a really good example of of that because, um, especially when you start looking at the relations between the elves and the humans, and uh, you know because there, um, you know, if you and I, I liked Rings of Power going into the, you know, um, talking about um, Numenor and and then the other humans and, you know, and and you you dive into that difference of these are the humans that stood by the elves on the side of good, quote unquote. And these are the humans that stood with the orcs and and uh, stood with uh, Melkor and Morgoth and and, and um, um, Sauron, yeah. and, you know, and they are bad quote unquote they're so right. bad they don't even get a country name they're just right. called the southlands yeah right like this whole area that has a king doesn't have a name it's just right. called the southlands <laughs> i mean king of that area the southlands oh, like where we yeah. live right the southlands the Southlands. yeah yeah, yeah. but we each also I, have like it's a commentary on la i wanted to bring this up because... <laughs> no because it's like actual na- like we have names of places. So I wanted to bring this up when I was hearing you rant last week. So f- from what I understand, um, it is, uh, and um, I, I, my my source is Joey's best friend Brandon, who is yes. like he is like I Kimmy level. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, Kimmy and Brandon grok each other on a very <laughs> fundamental Tolkien level. 100%. But um, uh, for, but apparently, so the rings. It's not that they can't refer to the movies. What they can't refer to is the Silmarillion. Yeah, they can so, all. They only they, have. Yeah. yeah, the. So the, they have the. Yeah, they have the rights to the. The, the, the second three, age. Yeah, to this and all the appendices, and the appendices, but not to the things that are actually in the Silmarillion, right? Which is what they're dealing with a lot. Well, so, and some of the second age so stuff. Name it. Yeah, some of the second age stuff is in the Silmarillion. Yes, but they can't do anything from the first age. They can do things that are named in the appendices, but they can't do anything that isn't named in either of those things. Yeah, which is why if you watch the show at the beginning, they don't have the rights to the world, the word Lorien. Oh uh, uh-huh. yeah. Um. So uh. And and like Telperion and Lorlin yeah. are the names of the two trees. They don't right. have the rights to actually use those names, which is right. why you just saw them in the beginning. Right. And they keep calling them the trees of light. <laughs> yeah. And things yeah. like that. So they they're they're working around it pretty well. Yeah. Um. There's one big spoiler thing where my husband and I like we're like di- deep diving because there's a huge well there's a lot of like big things they side track on, but. The person who ends up being the big bad is very different from how it is it is described in the book. Uh-huh. And that is because they did not have the rights to the name that is in 
the books because oh. it's not mentioned in the second age. Yeah. Because it's something that happened because they condense the timeline so much. Yeah. True. That like stuff that happened like is like all over the place. So they had to like rewrite a whole yeah. bunch of stuff. So it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that, but that's yeah. one of the, the many, many examples. I will say, yeah. yeah. There's got to be some Amazon executive that got canned because they screwed up that licensing so badly. Yeah. Oh. Because like a year later, somebody bought everything else yeah. for less than they paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. What? Who didn't, who didn't figure this deal out better? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You could have had it all. You could have been a contender. Right. Yeah. Mm. Except I, I would bet that that person probably now works for the company that got the better deal. Oh, maybe. Maybe. There's a lot <laughs> of that kind of conspiracy crap like in Hollywood. Yeah. 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 And now there's a whole new movie that we could write about, you know. The oh, my God. I could write so much stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, Hire me to write the next Superman movie. I have the best <laughs> idea. I can write things. I've never written a script, but I know people who have. And I have the best. I can just tell you the best idea. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's why you see when it says story by. Yeah. That's, that's the me. person who had the idea. I can be the story so, by. Yes. And someone else can actually write a thing. Um, I was going to bring up like yeah. elves though, or an ex yeah. a great example of this, uh -huh. um, where you have uh, uh, cultures that are very different from each other, who are all the same species. Yeah, uh, in Tolkien specifically. Um, if you just watch the movies, it doesn't make any sense because they all look the same. Right. But if you actually like study the different cultures of um, of Middle Earth and the the elves, they're very very different. You've got the yeah. Sin Sindar elves. Um, that are uh, like they they live and they they they're without going into too much history because you can watch my One Ring <laughs> AP for that. Um, when the world was created, there was darkness. Some of the el and the elves were called back to like their Garden of Eden, Balinor. Uh, some of the elves went, some of them didn't. So that right there has created like these two basic differences in how elves developed. And then you had elves who then stayed in the Garden of Eden, who we never see because they're not in any of the stories because they never came back to Middle Earth. And then the rest of them, which you kind of see in Rings of Power, you hear about it, uh, rebelled against the gods, included Galadriel. She is specifically, mm -hmm. and this is one of the things that they changed for Rings of Power, she is yeah. specifically banned from returning to Valinor. Yeah. So like that's why it's such a big deal in Lord of the Rings, where she at, when she turns down the ring is when she proves her worth again to the Valar. Mm -hmm. And that she is finally like, that's when they are like, okay, you have gotten over your pride and we forgive you and you can return to basically their equivalent of heaven again. Yeah. But she actually raised sword up with her, with some of her family members against the Valar um, during the Kinslaying where all the elves in their heaven, Valinor, like were fighting to, to leave and, to, and killed each other. So it was a big... It's awful. It's yeah. like the most awful, heinous thing that could ever happen. It's like elves yeah. killing elves, their family, yeah. um, and then leaving. Um, so you've got those elves who eventually come to Middle Earth. They've lived in this like paradise forever. They are like the most perfect beings. And then you've got these elves that have been there the whole time, and they're like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what <Yeah>. the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's just like all these different... Um, Cultures of elves, they all speak different languages, which Tolkien, of course, fucking wrote them all. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, that, it's just very interesting kind of study, if you ever want to, like, deep dive into that, of beings which are basically biologically identical. Yeah. But have such different histories and cultures and languages yeah. and customs because of what's happened as far as, like, their, their, um, yeah. their yeah. backstories. Yeah, exactly. Like, Sorry, I'm still not sure. What the hell? <laughs> Your right. Apple Watch is like, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm still not sure you know enough about <laughs> right. Tolkien to run a One Ring game. I was, I was sorry, to... I'm detecting a huge nerd. <laughs> <Yeah>. Warning, <laughs> warning. Uh, now I, you know, um, so so back to the email. Um, you know, My thing like, had to do with the email. It was very I know, exciting. I know, I, I completely agree. Okay. Um, but uh, so the other. Part that I wanted to bring up on this is it, um, and I, I this is another part of this uh, topic that I could go off for hours on. But um, the concept of good versus evil and alignment, especially as it's used in D and I think is is something that really, uh, really is very deconstructible, and and is you know the 
Um, in the original alignment is very much based in Judeo-Christian theology, yes. right? And and so one of the things that I started doing in terms of uh, reimagining how I view the alignments is um, is equating evil with selfishness and and uh, and good with selflessness, and it makes a lot the like if you think of it in that way, it makes a lot more sense of with the nuances of how people are Mm -hmm. um and so um so i so i think that's one of the things that that is kind of being touched on here with this idea of good versus evil and it being uh really a matter of perspective Mm -hmm. and you know and, and yes that's a very relativistic uh um way to talk about uh about morality but morals are relative. Sorry, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I will die on that hill. Yes, um, you know, and and if you and the the perfect example is already in here. My beautiful, adorable baby cats are, you know, would be considered evil to, uh, you know, to any yeah. songbird or tiny rodent. Yeah, and um, they often yeah. are. If you're yeah. playing like the any you can't any RPG that's about yeah. little mice, which there's a bunch of, uh-huh. like yeah. a lot of times. House cats are the evil oh, yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. They're, yeah, a hundred percent weapons of mass destruction. Absolutely, yeah. they are. <laughs> right, yeah. terrifying. Oh my god, Erica Odd in the chat just said morals are relative, but a lot of my relatives aren't moral. <laughs> right? uh, Entirely fair. Before yeah. we move on, I have to share one thing yeah. I saw on Twitter the other day, which is like the coolest idea. That's like a biological thing that really happens that you can put into an RPG and mm-hmm. be terrifying. So this crane or heron or something, I don't remember what it was, but what it does, it like walks in the water and then it like spreads its wings and like makes shade. Oh. Like it, it like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It makes like this big yeah. circle with its wings and like puts its head under its wings. So it makes shade and then it waits still yeah. till fish swim to sit in the shade. <laughs> and then it just like swoops oh. down with its, n- and it just eats them. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, Oh, that's terrifying. Oh. Like your exhausted party, like that, you know, you're the GM and they come and they're like, oh God, they just get out of a dungeon and it's hot outside and there's like this beautiful shade and they're like, oh, right, yeah. this is a beautiful, uh, weird tree. Cool. Yeah. And they sit there and they're down and then it's like, someone yeah. roll perception. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, it's just a forest dragon. Yeah. So. <laughs> you are crunchy and too good with ketchup. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah anyway. So. One of the yeah. things I really like about well, the the Troll Hunter movie that we've talked about on the podcast oh, many mm-hmm. times, yeah. but the upcoming oh. Troll movie, new one, mm-hmm. uh-huh. that's coming on Netflix, uh, looks awesome because, like, the troll is entirely camouflaged. <gasps> it just looks like a pile of rocks on the side of the road, and then there's in the trailer. Yeah. There's, I'm not no spoilers. I haven't seen the movie. In the trailer. All of a sudden, it just goes, oh, and like grabs a car. Oh my God. I'm like, (laughs) is this the same people as Troll Hunter? I don't think it is. Oh, okay. But it looks delightful. I'm very excited because it's very reality based. Yeah. Like, here's a Scandinavian story about trolls. And I'm like, and the troll is like Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, Uh, wow. Like, there's there's different sizes of them, but the big ones are apparently like giant. Yeah. I'm gonna wreck Oslo. Nice. I guess. Kind of size. That's awesome. And I'm like, that's that's awesome. Now I want to see Troll versus Godzilla. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It'd be oh, rad. God. Yeah. That's Why amazing. problem make when no problem have you don't want to make? <laughs> nice. Best line probably ever in the history of ever. Ever. We don't say it enough anymore. We, we kind don't. of got out of the habit. Yeah. I know. We need. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need to need get that. like a. Yeah. Something on the wall, painted on the wall. Yeah. Anyway, Batman, please write more emails like this. <laughs> I could go on for hours. I, yeah. So I love I love this email. Yes. So thank you. That's, I, I started kind of writing a take on Tolkien's elves mm-hmm. in a sci-fi setting mm-hmm. where, like, many of them left to go back to their home system oh, wow. but mm-hmm. some stayed and ended up mixing in with the culture that's still on the planet mm. and then years later some come back and it's a whole thing yeah. like mm-hmm. UFOs coming from the sky like oh, all the yeah. humans are yeah. panicked and freaking out and then there's like a small group of the elves that stayed that end up being the ones that fight off yeah. the, 
Oh. As like an expansionist thing. I mean, it like interesting. Yeah. It really works. What is it? Elindro, which is the is the the, the star. The, the yeah. star. Yeah, you know. I mean, they've already got spaceships, and there's a lot in the Silmarillion where they talk about the origins of it, you know in the void and all that, and that that is very much like, oh yeah, they're out in space. <laughs> it's <laughs> it could very easily translate into alien in some. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. We are at number two. 50 minutes, and we're on email number two. <laughs> we're fine. You, well, I mean, in the words of Nick, you knew I was a scorpion when you picked me up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I also picked like but very you look cool long and emails. Shiny and yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go, ooh. Yeah, ooh. All right. Ready to go, Dave. <clears throat> Hold on. I got to get gritty. Yeah. Like a frontiersman. Mailbag number two. <laughs> Ahoy, wielder of the golden lasso of truth and her stalwart band of masked heroes. It is I, Kurt Horde, Captain Curtis, DT Pints of the deep magic lore of Happy Jack's past, <laughs> riding in from the snowy frozen north of Homer, Alaska. Uh, I first wanted to publicly bestow all the Amazon warrior woman accolades upon Kimmy and her taking of the mantle of Empress of all things Happy Jacks. <laughs> You're doing an amazing job keeping the spirit of friends gathering around the table, kibitzing about the things they love. Okay. You're here. Namely, well, as you can see, because we're 50 minutes in <laughs> for one email. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of Tolkien lately. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like yeah. the dominoes just hit. It just happens. Right? Yep, yep. Uh, namely, a boundless passion for TTRPGs. Huzzah! Uh, I was just listening to Season 31, Episode 3 with Bill and Jay, and besides desperately wanting to run a Ragnarok game of Ten Candles, <laughs> right. I was blown away by the audio quality. Oh. It just sounded so clean and professional. Nary a belch could be detected. You win Canada. You win this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just say, like, I am a... Uh... I think we finally like really nailed everything in. It took a little while. Thank you for those of you who hung in through the beginning of season 30 with like different mics and everything. But I'm actually <laughs> incredibly pleased with like the quality and how everything's looking and stuff like yeah. that. Now. Yeah. So thank you for noticing. <laughs> I suppressed it. I didn't let it out into the microphone. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin it well, for like, Canada. We have little little belts. Right. Yeah, okay. Like literally last week after we were like, oh yeah, I, I'm trying hard to have no belching. Like literally, I was the one who was like, burp. Like, well, no, it was a little burp. It was a, a little, little burp. Oh, okay. Yeah, I little. kept it under control. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Control burpage. You're welcome. Yeah. Why burpage have when no burpage make you don't want to be? <laughs> and by the way, I have met many Canadians in my life. Who also enjoy beer quite a bit. Right. And they burp too. Yes. So I'm telling you. <laughs> <clears throat> I am writing in to not only share the joy of this Happy Jacks 2.0, but to help this, my favorite podcast feed, it's never in its never satiated hunger for content. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good and will now compose six emails oh my. regarding the burning questions troubling my mind as I enter into what can only be described as TTRPG Valhalla. <laughs> email the first and no we're not reading yeah. the six tonight I was going to say just to clarify just, just, we're reading mm, one I'm going to go tonight. home someday yeah <laughs> our families miss us <laughs> it's Thanksgiving this week I have to cook a turkey yes <laughs> uh, I have mentioned this on the discord if you are not on the discord why are you not on the discord <laughs> I was admittedly a deep hater of the platform and would gripe and complain along with my fellow old gamer, Kane Guru, about how things were so much better on the forum and yelling at the kids on my lawn. <laughs> but with the help of Discord, High Mage, Flying Jackalope, the Happy Jack Discord is one of the easiest, user-friendliest discords I peruse. Get on the Discord. Yes, and thank you, Flying Jackalope, for all your hard work. It's amazing, and you're just, you just—you really are a wizard with that whole thing. It's amazing. Hey. Legit. Maybe we should like run a game for the yeah, people that have put cool. in a bunch of time on yeah. Discord. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, sent yeah. um like the Happy Jacks lunch boxes to the people who ran oh, JackerCon. Cool. So oh, great. Kurt and and Flying Jackalope were two of the people who did that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, so it was very cool. They, I know Jackalope got his. I don't know, Kurt. You, you didn't tell me if you got yours. Tell me. All right, sorry. Well, anyway. you know, one of your next five emails. 
The horse died in a blizzard. Yeah. You know, it's, it yeah. is a long way to Homer, Alaska. That is yeah. my question. Like, do they have lawns in Homer, Alaska? Because he's telling, yelling kids to get off his lawn. Isn't yeah. it just like frozen snowpack oh. constantly? <laughs> no. In the summertime, Fairbanks, Alaska gets like humid and gross. I'm just oh, kidding. really? Ew. And <laughs> fucking mosquitoes the size of like a dinner plate. Yeah. Like, just you hear like, yeah. and you expect to hear like, yeah. Uh, you expect to hear right of the Valkyries <laughs> and see uh, see soldiers jumping off and uh, yeah. napalm and yeah. all of that, but no, it's just a mosquito yeah. coming to get you. Yeah, okay. 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 yeah, you can hear them saying like, "Should we eat him now or drag him down where the big ones might get him?" <laughs> yeah, not a joke. I yeah. swear. Uh, I I have a, a close family member that has spent many many years living up in the name change. Oh, God. It used to be called Barrow, Alaska. But now it's they've changed the name to be the name of the native village that, that oh. was in the area oh, first. Yeah, yeah. And mm. it's like Utavik. Pronunciation probably way wrong. Sorry. Mm. Uh, I should have looked that up before I mentioned it in That's public. Okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, also, uh, I mean... <laughs> Now, You're allowed now, to not. Know everyone's names. gonna go track him down now because there's got to be like five people who live there, right? So, right. well, <laughs> I mean, this is this is my cousin that that uh, he told me a story about when he first moved up there. He went on a grant from National Geographic to do a bird study, mm -hmm. and they took him out to this little island where he was to spend a month on this mm -hmm. little island that only exists in the summertime because the rest of the time it's covered in ice. Huh. Um, the ice, I was right about some of the ice. Well, this is this is at the very northern end, and Homer's at the southern end. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, but uh, he's out there, and they dropped him off on, like, one of those little rib inflatable boats, and they gave him a shotgun, and they said, this is for if there's a polar bear. And they said, but whatever you do, don't fucking shoot the bear. <laughs> you will just make it angry and it will eat yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> just shoot in the air and hope it leaves. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, they're yeah. fucking terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, my cousin, if you've ever been to the San Diego Zoo and seen the polar bears there, my cousin rescued yeah. those. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, sorry, James oh. V did best mod ever. Said Utkiavik. Utkiavik. Yeah, I was. Okay. I was close. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was close. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Formerly known as Barrow. Yeah. yeah. Utkiavik. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Utkiavik. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's where I got to eat whale for yeah. the first and only time in my life. Uh, yeah. Uh, because I was visiting once. Yeah. And yeah. It was cool. Yeah. I've heard it's very salty. Yes. Yeah. It was. Uh, it's probably you who told me that. Yeah, yeah. I, was gonna yeah. Say, I, I think it I was is, there for this. Yeah, time. it was like chewing gum flavored of the sea. Yeah. The part that I had. <laughs> That's right. Yes, you did. Yeah. All right. I'm like, oh, I know something about this subject. Yeah. Oh, it's because you. Because I told that story before. <laughs> okay. I'm sure. So we should start <clears throat> the second email now. So, well, no, I mean, this is the second email of the day. But it's his first email. Well, I did that part already. That was the oh, next part of the discussion. Yeah, oh, okay. second paragraph. Good lord. <clears throat> it's like. Uh, I read the Silmarillion and it was easier than this email, Kurt. Holy cow. It's not. <laughs> it's it's not. That is a lie. <laughs> Nobody reads that thing. <laughs> I did. I really you put did. it on the shelf and you say you read it. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, I mentioned on the Discord that my totally not deep one infested small coastal Alaskan town of 4,500 people is experiencing a weird sort of TTRPG mania right now. I can't explain it. But it's that moment where I look over my shoulder and my groaning bookshelves filled with RPG books and my swollen hard drive, I do miss the ridiculous dick jokes sometimes, but I can't help myself, uh, <laughs> filled with gaming PDFs and I know this is the moment I've been preparing for my whole life. Uh, just a brief synopsis, brevity being the soul of the git and one of my disads of this aforementioned mania. Number one. I am running Tyranny of Dragons D&D 5e for a group of almost all totally new to the hobby over the past year. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. One of my favorite things also is introducing new people to the idea. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Uh, I am also running Journeys Through the Radiant Chapel, which... Citadel. Citadel, excuse me. Uh, which say what you like about the, quote, most popular role-playing game of all time, unquote. This book is incredibly yes. written. 
It's the first WotC D&D campaign written entirely by people of color and focuses decidedly on non-Euro, non-Tolkien-style fantasy. Beautiful book. Yeah, Very it is cool. just rave reviews and, like... And unfortunately, like, uh, Starjammer came out after that and just, like, did not meet, like, the same quality level. Mm. And it, it it's just, like, this, like, just gem in the middle of, like, yeah. a, a bunch of other, like, sort of mediocre stuff. And I know Amazing mm. People worked on the other things as well. Yeah. But, like, I I don't really read a lot of D&D stuff. Because even if I play d and I never play in, like, pre-written systems or settings or mm. any of that stuff generally. Um, but this is one of the few books that I they did pick up and I re- read, and it's it's very high quality and very good. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, I am also running a weird hodgepodge gaming experiment of my own design again for mostly new to the hobby folks, where we set up the overall arc of the campaign using microscope. Love thank you, Tomes, for showing it to me. Me too. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Tomes. And then proceeded to play various parts of the microscope timeline using a different RPG each three sessions. I've been wanting to do that ever yes. since I first nice. discovered microscope. I was like, that yeah. would be so cool. Uh, we built our first protagonist using a wildly popular game based on tarot cards. Huh. Hmm. I Weird. wish I knew more about that. I mean, there's uh, a lot of those now, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. I let the bitterness out. I'm stopping. Nope, nope, back. nope, no, let it ride. Uh, Sucking it back in. I certainly was using it before it was cool. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of it. I'd go into greater detail, but talking about a campaign world sometimes feels like, let me tell you about my character, navel gazing. <laughs> and besides, it'll make a better single email because it's such a cool success. Excellent. Awesome. <clears throat> I am also running a Savage Worlds Pathfinder game online via Fantasy Grounds with my longtime, albeit far away, Indiana crew. I actually have wanted to look into Savage Worlds Pathfinder. I mm. checked it out. Uh, but I like the idea of Savage Worlds absorbing other lore. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. just yeah. this slowly, quietly groping amoeba of one yeah. whole set. Yeah. <laughs> I dig that. Yeah. It's like that Katamari Tagachi game. Eventually, yes. Savage Worlds will roll over your system and absorb yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> Learn one set of rules right. and play them forever. <laughs> <laughs> I am also running uh, Tyranny of Dragons 5e for a group of local teachers, mostly new to the hobby, which has led to the creation of something delightfully called the Heckfire Club. Nice. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. Tell them we adore them. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. I am also, you get it, running a Storm King's Thunder 5e game at our local teen center that has upwards of nine players at some sessions. As wow. a friend of the show, Rose, told me, Sounds like this town needs more GM. Right. <laughs> I'm sure, for sure. Uh, I actually found a, a, an amazing vacation rental in Homer. Oh, yeah. That's all like Disney ish themed. It's huge. Is it the one we looked at? Yes. Oh, yeah, with the, the Peter the Pan. Peter Pan house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Dave and I, during pandemic, when we weren't allowed to see each other, like, it was like, 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 like early, it was like April or May yeah. of 2020. Like I had just had a baby and like no one, we weren't seeing each other. Like nobody was seeing anybody. So what we do is like there's a bunch of us would hang out on Discord and we just like dive into Zillow. And, uh, <laughs> and find like either outrageous yeah. homes in terms of like, well, that house is listed for $160 million yeah. Yeah. and it's stupid. Or just bizarre homes <laughs> Yeah, that could be super cheap, but we're just like, what was happening yeah. here? Well, really, we were like, okay, we're going to, this would be an amazing place to hold a giant party with all of our friends. Yeah. Yeah. We missed each other so much. We're right. like, yeah. we could just rent this place out and we could all just like not leave our houses for like weeks. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and I mean, this was before we had tests even. So mm-hmm. we could use like, it was just like our dreaming of like a giant communal experience but yeah, yeah. that house I, I definitely remember that house that was amazing mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so uh, it's on the list yeah. maybe at some point yeah uh <clears throat> this uh leads me finally to the aforementioned heckfire club one again of the... i just want to point out finally but there's still like four or five more paragraphs <laughs> uh, the ch- okay. also the chat is um <laughs> actually me i guess i called i i, I called out star jammer i guess it's spell, spell jammer, jammer. Yeah. oh okay i yeah. wasn't gonna say anything That's but nice. thank you chat thanks yeah. chat i mean <laughs> i'm obviously a D expert so <laughs> <laughs> okay that was our kid. here's the part right i i know very little about what's going on in current D, right 
But when they revive something from the ancient depths, right. I'm like, who has Whoa. awoken me from my slumber? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny because I like know how to play D&D. I know the rules of D&D. But when it comes to like the actual lore of D&D, I'm like, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, never D? Yeah. And a, a ocean yeah. plea? Or water? Well, a water D? Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, well, you have to part that. of it is because it, people, it, like over time, uh, Forgotten Realms has sort of become default D&D. Mm-hmm. Whereas it used off, to, yeah. yeah, it used to be just one setting in that used D D equivalent to Greyhawk and um the um Dragon the Lance. Dragon yeah. Lance, et cetera. Yeah. 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 And, um, <laughs> but yeah, but now it's become like the primary setting. And yeah. yeah. Oh, Eberron is another one. Oh, like, Dark yeah. Sun. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's only so much yeah. brain space that I can dedicate to re- memorizing imaginary places. Yeah. Most of it's taken up by Tolkien and then whatever I am writing at the time. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Sorry, D and D. You're low on the list. <laughs> All right. Anyway, go yeah. ahead. But at the same time, I can still tell you how to run across the entire continents of EverQuest. Mm. Mm. Uh-huh. Because I can't get rid of it. It's same. in there, and I keep trying to learn new yeah. things and make it go, but it doesn't. Yeah, same yeah. of World of Warcraft. Like, a boom. Like, the whole, like, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're very visceral. Mm. Uh, <laughs> all right, back, okay. back, back. Here we go. Sorry, sorry, uh, back. Back to uh, you. Aforementioned Hackfire Club. One of the teachers from the Tyranny Group thought it would be fun to start a D&D club at his school where he teaches 5th and 6th grade. Yeah. All right. Admittedly, it was instigated by a shining star of a 6th grader that got excited to run games after Aww. playing in a one-shot I ran for him and his family. So cool. They put out the call and got 44 kids to show up. <laughs> I was totally stunned. Wow. <laughs> wow. Please tell me they didn't all try and play on one table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. they still there. Yeah. Let him yeah. say. Well, for like teenage... That game still hasn't made it to the first round of For combat. like teenage D&D tables, this is like four of them. You know? 11, yeah. Yeah. Ten, well, yeah, yeah. Ten players and one GM. Yeah, that's how you run it. Well, this that's... is like pre-teen. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, my God. Yeah, like, fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, fifth yeah. grade is 10, 11. Yeah. So sixth grade is like 11, yeah. 12 year old. Yeah. That's when... That's what age I was when I started yeah. D&D. But there were... Four of us in the entire county. Yeah. So. I mean, I've got 36 in my class. So that's yeah. a lot even for me to just, like, get to do fractions. Right? That's, like, a yeah. lot to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Here's, a, here's a challenge. Yeah. Try and run the combat for your kids at school one day. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, all right, everybody, roll for initiative. I'm going to write out the whole list of everybody on the board. God. Please look at your spells before it's your turn. Remember yeah. when you're on deck. Like, yeah, you have to do the on deck thing. Yeah. Like, okay, it's your turn, and Jimmy, you're on deck. Yeah. If you're still flipping pages when we call your number, yeah. you're out. It's like... Lose your turn. Skipping you. Yeah. And I'm calling no, you your mom. Hold it, I'm not rewriting this list. Don't make me do a 13th parent teacher conference today, yeah. okay? <laughs> Sorry. Still scarred. I'm like, sorry, Mrs. or Mrs. X, but your son did not have his spells ready when it was his turn. Unacceptable. Everybody was I, waiting. Right. It was very disrespectful yeah. to our He's class. Getting community. a you in combat. <laughs> <laughs> and it needs improvement in spell preparation. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, now I want to write this game. <laughs> he wants to branch into Warlock next semester. That is not going to happen. <laughs> See, forget like kids We're, on brooms. We need like the. Yeah. Like real school experience, like right. like this is what it's like to be a teacher yeah. <laughs> at these schools where kids can turn themselves into things. It's like I I have your mom on speed spell. Yeah, I feel like the name for that club would be a lot more profane than heck fire. <laughs> That's yeah. the beep 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 yeah. beep. The beep, wild beep, cabinet whiskey beep, beep, club. Beep, yeah. club. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Exactly. The, I'm having a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do silent reading for the rest of the day, everyone. Get out your spell books. <laughs> Sorry. God. No, I'm not. My brain has gone off on that. Yeah, it's whole, a whole. Oh my god. Right okay. My head. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> we can do this. We can. Uh, blah 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 blah. To wrap this up, once I start typing, I tend to be a tad bit verbose. <laughs> That's what? fine. What? Uh, it gives me something to read because otherwise I just sit here awkwardly looking at the camera for an hour. <laughs> That's uh, why you belong in the group, Kurt. <laughs> for those of you listening to the podcast, Dave is looking awkwardly at the yeah. camera. 
<clears throat> Nobody does awkward like Jay. No. So good. Trust. Uh, they've now done three sessions of one hour character gen and backstories. Let me tell you, Zack Snyder has nothing on the darkness a 12 year old can weave into the backstory. <laughs> so many orphans whose parents were killed by dragons. <laughs> oh, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm dead. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, finally, we've come to taking them through their first adventure. The 44 kids have been divided into two separate days, four groups of five each. Okay. Doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay, great. That's, that's doable. All right. I'll be running one of the groups, the teachers two more, and the final group will be the Shining Star Instigator student. Nice. Our okay. plan is to run the first session very much step by step. Uh, read the intro, five minutes. Discuss how to set a scene, five minutes. Ask them to describe their characters, five minutes. Discuss how to help describe their characters, five. Uh, have a first encounter, ten minutes. Discuss how it went, five minutes. Have a second encounter, ten minutes. Discuss how it went, five minutes. That's ambitious, but all right. <laughs> okay. I, I, I admire your drill sergeant attitude. I'm going to say my response for the... The actual question. All right. That's, yeah. That's likely an hour of time. Uh, our hour of time. My question, yes, I actually have a fucking question. <laughs> what do the hosts think about this approach? What would you do differently? The fate and future the fate of the future of our of PTRPGs in your is in your hands. No pressure. Cheers, Kurt. Nice. Right. Whew. Can see that yeah. fate. Uh, <laughs> AKA Captain Kurt, aka DT Pints. P.S. Do not cite oh. the deep magic of the P.S. to me. I was there <laughs> when they were first written about armor class. <laughs> ah, uh, beautiful. We appreciate yeah. Our, yeah. our original jackers. Right? Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, man. Okay, so, all right. To directly answer the question, I think this is a, a lovely idea that will fall apart at uh, the step ask them to describe characters because you will get, you know, two of them that take, you know, the 30 seconds or so to describe why and how they're orphaned and the best, best badass of all time. And then you will have the other two or three who will need a good hour to get through that conversation. Speaking as one of those who had, who would generally need that hour. Yeah, there will be, you, you will absolutely get derailed here on the <laughs> on the please describe your character section. Um, I think the first thing you can cut out is discuss how to help describe characters uh, because, uh, you know, when it comes to make-believe, like kids this age are pros. They, I don't think they're gonna need a lot of help just trying to decide that, um, you know, I, I think the 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 real well, and uh, so yeah, so so if if you're doing an hour, um, you know, I, I mean, first of all, like to have first encounter ten minutes and discuss how it went, and then second encounter ten minutes discuss how it went. I, I think you're you're overpacking the schedule like by a lot. I would let it be more organic, you know. Um, I, I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna spend an hour. Um, you know, read the intro, try to get everybody to just introduce their character, not, you know, not describe them in full, but just introduce them. Just say a little bit about what their appearance is like, what kind of voice they have, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, what kind of weapons and armor they have, because they'll, you know, they'll think that's cool to, you know, to, to talk about. Uh, so let them let them just have the visuals, but don't go deep into like, well, here's my character's backstory because then you'll get derailed. Um, but but then but then I would, um, and I've I've learned this 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 my takeaway from run, uh, running lots of uh, PBTA one shots is um, is don't don't worry about the structure is is my advice. Um, it will take care of itself. Describe the first encounter and just start it, and then give them a five, okay. uh, give them a, like a fifteen minute warning, and say, "Okay, fifteen minutes, wrap up that final encounter, and let everybody go one last time, and let them win." You know, um, you know, tell the tell the the DMs like, "This is the point where you fudge the dice, and everybody succeeds, and you know, and you vanquish the bad guys." Um, you know. And then it, it then take that and then like get take that last five minutes to either 
give it, tell what kind of thing they're going to go do next or why they're going to stick together or why they're going to leave and, and then some time to discuss how it went. But yeah, but I, I think you're even with this with small groups like, you know, for like a group of five, you never you're just never going to get through this much stuff in one hour. I just don't think that's going to work. I agree on that point, but I'm going to push back on. I love you. But just about yeah. everything else you said. OK. All right. I think. Oh, all right. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you're absolutely on point if you're talking about a one shot with adults. Uh huh. I think you need some sort of structure like this, especially with kids of this age who haven't done this before. Yeah. I do think your schedule is a little overpacked. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, get a timer that they can see. Mm, like, mm -hmm. I have a giant one. cost me like 30 bucks. You don't need to do that. But even like the little, um, like if you can get a little five minute hourglass timer, that's very like in theme and cool. Mm -hmm. But something that where they can visually help keep track of time. Because kids this age struggle with like, they don't feel the passage of time the way we do. Yeah. Because you can say, hey, okay, let's wrap it up in 15 minutes. They have no concept of that. Yeah. They oh, start yeah. talking and then it's been like, oh, God, we have two minutes left on the timer. <laughs> we have to do our entire project in two minutes. Right. So it's like one of those things where you have to have the visual cue and then you have to constantly, okay, five minutes has passed. Yeah. Have you gotten one third of your project done? Because you only have two five minutes left, which is 10 minutes. Like you really have to break it down. <laughs> um, so I would have some sort of visual cues. If you've got teachers in your group, they I'm sure have timers. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. So right. you can probably be like, hey, you could do, they probably have multiple timers. I've got like, <laughs> I literally have, I think seven timers in my class. I've got the big one in the front and then I have little ones I can actually hand <laughs> each a little group. Um, so those are, those are very helpful. Huh. Um, I would also maybe design um, or have some sort of um, worksheet or, or at least blanks for them to fill out about describing their characters. Oh, yeah. Imagine That's a great it. idea. Yeah. 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 So yeah. even if it's just something simple like, what do they look like? But, it, you know, something where they yeah. can just write it down to keep them all on track so they're all giving the same information. Yeah. Because, like, you were right on point where you've got to get people who are like, oh, mine's an orphan. His parents were killed. He likes his sword. He kills stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's yeah. going to be that kid. And then there's going to be the one who like whips out just like, I mean, they're not that different than adults. Then there's going to be right. the one who whips out like their five page backstory yeah. and starts to read it. And it's yeah. like, probably has no periods. It's like one five page yeah. run on sentence. Yeah. And, you know, and most of them are going to involve like probably a magical dolphin. And those are the gay kids. So <laughs> it's just, it's just going to happen. <laughs> Don't ask them specifically. Don't. Right. Yeah. Don't ask them if they're gay. Yeah. But trust me, they'll figure it out eventually, eventually. if they love dolphins. Yeah. yeah. Um, so ask them to describe their characters. <laughs> Speak from experience. Yeah. Giving them each one minute to describe their characters. That's a lot. I would not yeah. ask them how to set a scene. I would skip that part because they mm -hmm. don't have the tools for that yet. That might be something really cool to add in down the yeah, line. Yeah. So I'd be like, read the intro. Actually, you know what? I would ask them to describe their characters first. And then... Um, mm, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by the discuss how to help describe characters. Like, I think I think if you yeah. do, like, a worksheet that kind of, like, takes yeah. care of that. That's kind of what I thought was, like, for those who don't really know how to introduce their character just kind of talking about like oh well you know one of the things you can Can't tell us is like what's what's the, the really yeah. cool thing you think you can do yeah yeah you, know, uh, that, yeah. Yeah. you might want to just steal like some parts of a uh, pbta books for right. this yeah because like the pbta books make it so easy and like they if they want to go off book great but if they want to just like circle like circle this way yeah. yeah like that's very helpful yeah. for them and that might be a great place to start um you could probably you, copy and paste onto a document pretty yeah. easy you could probably just copy and paste from dungeon world and mm -hmm. you know um it, which probably has looks that are for each class or, or you know for each thing so, yeah. yeah yeah something like yeah. that just to, so, just to support yeah. them and then give them a couple minutes each and then make sure they each have a, you know they have the timer going yeah and be nice about it. Like when the timer goes, up, okay, could you could you finish up? You know, and make sure you tell them, hey, you're gonna have two minutes, so don't put too much down on your sheet ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and then ten minutes for your first encounter is, like, are they gonna are they killing a rat? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. are they are they catching yeah. a rat in a room that has no obstacles whatsoever and no way for the rat to get out of the room? So, I <laughs> had great success with a first combat encounter with uh -huh. kids. Yeah. By doing it. Framing it like a Marvel movie mm -hmm. and framing it like Marvel movies introduce 
new characters in action scenes. Yeah. Where some new character comes in and does something amazing, mm -hmm. and then is like, "Hi, I'm Captain Marvel," or "Yeah, <laughs> bam, I'm Black Panther," or what, you know, like just here's your one cool thing. You come in and do it. What is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I ran a thing that was kind of like that where there it was a sort of a mass battle mm -hmm. that they were in. Oh, and uh huh. I kind of fudged the rules about the uh, the yeah. goblin army they were fighting or whatever. But mm -hmm. as each kid had a turn. I said, okay, what does your character do to take out a goblin yeah. at the beginning? Mm -hmm. And they would look at their sheets and figure out what their character was really good at. And so I had a kid that was playing a barbarian type that came in and full Conan chopped one in half. And, nice. And I didn't ask uh -huh. for, like, dice rolls about that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, just tell me how your character shows up and then describe what they look like when they do it to all the mm -hmm. other characters. Nice. I really yeah. like that. That's and then, yeah. so they all got their little moment in the spotlight and had their moment to be like, yeah, my character's super strong and I chopped a goblin in half. And, yeah. And yeah. then a wizard kid was like, I, you know, I shoot ice and mm -hmm. it freezes this goblin up and then he cracks and falls into lots of chunks. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it helped that I had imaginative kids. And I gave them an example. Like, I introduced a GM PC mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. with kind of a, okay, cool, here's my, you know. Yeah, that's a good I really like that. Thing. Yeah. So the kids kind of all saw a framework of what I was talking about. That's yeah. cool. I actually might steal that for any time right. I run, like, a superheroes game at, like, a con or something. That's a really cool way to, like, introduce everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a really cool way to do that, too. That might be, like... Like a, a more like active yeah. way to do the describe the characters piece. Yeah. Like I'd almost like replace that with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So which and, is really yeah. cool. And, and and you can kind of that could kind of uh also merge with the having a first encounter and a second encounter, you know, so that you have like that's your that's your sort of like first thing is this action scene. And then you only have one actual other encounter. Yeah. And, you know, and not two. Where you yeah. then begin yeah. to engage with the rules. Yeah, right. yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think the discussing how it went, um, that could be useful. It kind of depends on the kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, and, and I'm not, depending on how you want to frame that, uh, like if you're looking for them to learn about the system, what, you know, what you want them to do, it might yeah. be better to have, um, I have these little tickets out of class, I do, um, and I have these little mini, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, these little mini report cards when kids work in groups Mm -hmm. for like a big project where they all get to give grades on different aspects to the other people in their group. Mm -hmm. And I take that under consideration when I give each kid their grade. Mm -hmm. So that way it helps even out like, okay, well I sat and I drew everything and I wrote everything. And this person only just like traced the writing I did. And this person just yeah. like didn't do anything or everybody worked really hard. And cause kids are very honestly, like very equitable about that. They are, yeah. They are really good at grading each other and know, and especially you don't grade them like, hey, what grade would you give them? It's like effort. Did they help you? You know, yeah. did, like, did they do an even amount of work? So it's like basically that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, do you, you know, did, were, were they um, like attitude, things like that? It's like very subjective. It's not actually like, did they yeah. write the correct information about Human their Native a. American? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's usually on a scale of like one to four or one to five. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe giving them those little things, the end, like yeah. uh, with like specific feedback that you're yeah. looking for. And they're they're more likely to be aware of and, and be graceful about um, neurodivergence and things like that, too, among their mm -hmm. peers. And, you know, so. Yeah. So, so the the you know they'll be a little more fair in some ways about like oh well I know so and so is shy so I'm not gonna like gr you know be hard on them because they didn't talk a lot they you know they they did their job and they had fun and you know and that's fine yeah I'd be I'd be so, careful yeah. what you were done you, it yeah. shouldn't yeah. be things that are um, subjective like like it shouldn't right. be how yeah. much did they talk it's like yeah yeah you know yeah. Did, you know did you know what you needed to do and things like that right. so um yeah all of that stuff so yeah. I so that's You're a good list? way. Yeah. In this situation, you're less worried about grading the Dave, kids. you got to scoot that. You're getting off camera. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> roaming. Yes, you are. Uh, I was reaching for a beer oh. uh, <laughs> when I had something to say suddenly. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to be subtle about yeah. it, and now I've ruined it. Okay. Uh, so you don't, you're don't like you not focused on grading the other kid's performance mm -hmm. at the table, but you could have a thing like, what did you think about the game? Mm -hmm. 
because then the kids aren't right. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. It's not a group project. It's just yeah. No. You know, what worked for you as a, as a player? What did you like? You know, what was your favorite thing that happened? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, maybe it's another kid did a thing, or maybe you know. Yeah, well, that, right. and that was kind of my point. I, I didn't mean to ha have them. For, yeah, I, I think I yeah. use them to create each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. But it's very and they're just like slips of paper, and you can just print off a million of them and then cut them yeah. up and give them out every time. Yeah. Um, I like. Uh, okay, so Kurt's in the chat right now. So he's I was, was going to say yeah. that. Say that, yeah, I'm reading this. I think too. again, the hope is to train more kids to actually be GM. So trying to talk more about what's going on mechanically. So that's a very key yeah. point. Yeah. Um, and I honestly, I think that I would. Um, like once you do it, like like break it down, like this, like whatever your your formula is that you end up with, like write a little agenda, yeah, and then maybe ask like, hey, okay, we're gonna do like, and maybe instead of doing like a full campaign after you run a couple sessions or run a small yeah. adventure, like a five game arc or something like that, be like, okay, we're gonna do a bunch of little what we call one shots, yeah, and everyone's gonna come up with a venture. I will help you, like I will be your, yeah, your buddy yeah. GM. You'll come up with a story, you know, and I will, as you run it, I will just help you with rules stuff. Yeah. Because that takes a lot of the weight off of them. And they're like, oh, I don't know, like, exactly, like, when a dragon breathes fire, what happens? They can, like, right, yeah. come up with a story, and then you can just help them with that part. Yeah. But I do want to push back a little bit. Captain Kurt 42, I don't know what you think you, why you think you have any kind of insight into the situation. I mean, that's just <laughs> ridiculous. You don't even know what this writer saw. Yeah. I'm that wasn't in the list of AKA. I know, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Captain, Kirk. how are we supposed yeah. to know? Um, you know, um, I think in what I would also say to that is, um, is uh, I think uh, Captain Curtis it, was in his list of AKA. Yeah, yeah, but that. there's nothing about forty-two. Okay, right, there's no forty-two. There's no forty-two. <laughs> Captain you can't Kurt. confuse Captain Kurt with Captain Kurt forty-two. Uh, okay. so, Man. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, I think you know. I, I think another thing to do that might be a lot of fun and might really kind of pull out the ones who are really who are really interested is is offer kind of a you know an after talk or something like that where you know like those who really want to stay in like all any everybody talk together across multiple groups like let's get to like hey did you have fun what did you like about it what do you not like about it what do you what do you oh, yeah. wish was different? Um, you know, hey, does anybody feel like they would like to be the person running a game next time? Like, let's let's plan another session where those people can, those kids can can come together and we can talk about like, here's how you do it. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. So I think um, you know, I think that's that's where you can um, you know where where you'll have a lot of fun and really get the people who are really excited about it kind of pulled out and separated and, you know, and able to kind of pull, push the group further. Yeah. And absolutely. I mean, what else do they have to do in the coming months? Right. In case yeah. the nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, With right. mosquitoes. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. they wait. Oh, okay. As soon as the ice thaws, then they come. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, God. Get the blood transfusions ready. <laughs> But yeah, I yeah that I I think you know uh, there's a lot of good ideas there and you know and I, I think Kimmy your suggestions are really good and, and, like I mm. yeah I, I I think yeah having having that balance of structure I think is going to be really important yeah. but, and yeah. it's important for for kids of that age yeah. especially like once they get used to it you can pull the structure away it's better to yeah. start with, when you have kids um, and you're working with them and they're trying to get them to do stuff in a group together like this especially when you have a time crunch. Start out with more structure, and then if you don't need it, you can yeah. pull back on structure. It's, right, yeah. it's, it's always harder to add structure later with kids when they're not used to it than to have too much structure and then slowly move Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. All right, mailbag number three. Cool. Hey, y'all, listening to the discussion in season 30, episode 22, and wanted to add an addendum mm -hmm. to the safety tools discussion. Obviously, I agree with everything you said. X card trumps all. Kitchen. Uh, Dave? I understand. Okay. Um, sorry, no, that wasn't an email. Kitchen was <laughs> X card trumps all. And in only games, if you don't have a safety tab on your character keeper, uh, I'm going to be hesitant in that game. So absolutely. So for those of you who don't know, there's like a safety. Uh, when you're playing online games, a lot of people use what's called a character keeper, which mm -hmm. is like generally a spreadsheet. Most of them are made in Google Sheets where oh, yeah, all yeah. the character sheets are on there and it's got like the basic rules. Um, 
a, a lot of PBTA games are like this. So you get them and you just customize your sheet. So all, all the things you need are in the in the character keeper. And there's one of the the things that's kind of a a, a new like play culture norm is to have a safety tab in there where like the lines and veils are all written so yeah. everybody can refer back to them and things like that. It's funny, um, I, I had that for years and never knew that's what it was called. <laughs> yeah, I can't take it, but yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you don't have a safety tab, you're going to be hesitant to be in that game, for sure. Uh, the only addendum I would add is for GMs. When posting, pitching your game, and you want to explore any sort of sensitive topic, make sure your post has content warnings, detail what you wish to explore. I would let players know, oh, uh, it will let players know, oh, this is not for me. Uh, granted, I don't know of all the types of games that would be run with this sort of exploration, but I know it's most common in horror games. Thanks, have a good time, and be safe in games. Jolene. P.S. The first ever P.S. I did. I know that in one episode, uh, that in one, in episode one of the, uh, sorry, I know in the episode one of the host said something like, oh, you want to explore child harmony game? Get therapy. <laughs> Warn against saying things like that. Just something to think about. And I agree. And I do want to apologize. I know I said no apologies yeah. for this. <laughs> this is not a personal opinion. You're right. And I think it was probably me who said that because personally right now, child harm is a big kind of stress mm. point for me. Yeah. So I think I probably had that very visceral reaction to that because yeah. it is yeah. one of my ex is my hard lines right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's one of the points where like I read a, a, a like just the headline of a story about a toddler the other day and I scrolled past oh. it as fast as I could. And it just like ruins my whole yeah. day. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was yeah. just like so heavy on my heart. So I feel like that was probably a very quick emotional reaction for me on yeah. that part. And I apologize. Yeah. There are absolutely like anybody can explore any topics. I'm actually <laughs> helping to write a game right now that is about um, child trauma and things like that, mm. which is very strange. But um, yeah. it's uh, kind of cathartic and helpful. But so there are absolutely ways you can explore things like child harm and yeah. a lot of reasons why people would want to explore that yeah. that are completely healthy. And I do apologize for just yeah. dropping something <laughs> that is very insensitive and looking back at it. And thank you, Jolene, for like calling out on that because that's a very important thing to point out. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, I, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I I did a game. So I was doing a, a it was going to be a World of Darkness game. And we were going to do, we created characters in uh, The Innocence, mm -hmm. which is their, like, child, you know, kids in the World of Darkness game. And um, and then we, so we created these characters who were going to be in a, like, 1930s orphanage, mm -hmm. you know, or 19-teens orphanage. And then, um, and then we all knew going into this that the the kids in the orphanage were ultimately going to end up, um, you know, kidnapped into the Fey realm, and and then we were going to follow up with the same characters at, um, coming all out of the Fey realm together um, and play a um, a campaign of Changeling: The Lost, uh, which is the the New World of Darkness um, uh, Changeling. Um, it, and it, as those characters now having been transformed by the Fey Realm. And um, for those who don't know Changeling the Lost, it is very different from Changeling the Dreaming in that in Changeling the Dreaming, there's a lot of different ways why your character might be a, a Fey, right? So you could just be a soul, a Fey soul that's continuously reborn. You could have been like, you know, switched out with, um, you know, with a, a a fey child at birth and uh, all kinds of things like that mostly harmless mm -hmm. and but changeling the lost is specifically you were um you were kidnapped into the fey realm there you know there's not like uh you voluntarily went like all of the origins are based on you were in you were captured mm -hmm. you were you were uh forced there and um and essentially uh this is what's happened after you've got out. So it really centers around themes of abuse and trauma and, um, you know, and, um, you know, and those kinds of things. And so, so we, we dove pretty hard into it and, and I wish every, you know, unfortunately, you know, what a lot of us didn't realize going into it is that the, the GM had some, um, uh, uh, sort of gross ideas about what oh. constituted horror, oh. and you know, uh, and not not like 
uh, you know, n not like um, sexual assault, the, the children or anything, but it was just very much a like, like the horror is very much based on violating uh, people. And, yeah. and there was just a lot of that, that, that we were like, oh, this is kind of icky and yeah. we don't feel very safe in this. Or not, not that we didn't feel safe, but we didn't feel like. Well, no, it's 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 safe. Yeah, you, I mean, it's not like personal safety. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. there's a safe, feeling safe in a game where yeah. you don't feel like you are emotionally safe. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It felt like it felt like the goal was voyeuristic trauma rather than exploring um, how people deal with trauma. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, um, that's a great way of describing it. And I yeah. think that's what Jolene is saying right yeah. here. And I think that's a great kind of example of that, like how the GMs need to okay. put content warnings and real really reflect mm -hmm. on the story that they want to tell. Yeah. And be honest with their players about that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um but I did want to just like like read that and own that and thank you, Jolene, mm -hmm. for and and everybody always for keeping us honest. And we yeah. do make mistakes and it's important yeah. to own up to it and learn well, from it. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna end this because yeah. we gotta go. <laughs> we can keep talking for sure. Uh, thank you for joining us for Season 31, Episode 5 of the Happy Jacks RPG Podcast. Please visit hivemind.itch.io, that's H-Y-V-E-M-Y-N-D dot itch.io, to support our amazing Indie Designer of the Month, Christina Stone Bush. Thank you to our chat mod, James V, and to all amazing Patreons who keep us ad-free and independent. If you want to join their amazing ranks and also get some perks from our Indie Designer of the Months, you can join at happyjacks.org slash Patreon. Uh, my name is Kimmy. I'm Kadave. I'm Adam. And today we're going to leave you with a song by a band we haven't featured before. They're called Electotron, and the game is or the game, the uh, song is called Danger Inbound. Now this is a group that is formed by some of our friends from the Dread Crew of Oddwood, but oh. that this is like their electric like sci-fi band. It's kind of metalish, mm. but electric okay. metal. Um, they have an amazing music video for the song, which I will put in the show notes um, that's on YouTube. It's so good. And if you want to find this band, they don't have a website yet, but they're um, Instagram.com slash Electatron, E-C-L-E-C-T-O-T-R-O-N. Um, and yeah, these are amazing friends. And it's if you like... Eclectotron. Eclectotron. Oh, yeah. I'm saying Eclectotron. Eclectotron. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Wait. Oh, well, it says Electatron on one and Eclectotron... Okay, well, one of them's right. Click in the show notes <laughs> and listen to the music. It's super great. So and there's electronic metal music about voting or right. electronic metal music about obscure collections. Right, yeah. yeah. Either and way, tastes. awesome. Well, I, was I thinking, like both. I was yeah. thinking like right. electric, not elect electric. Never mind. Mm. Okay, we made their very cool music oh, very yeah. uncool. I don't no, know how we made it uncool. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I right. don't make everything cool. All right, goodbye. Sure. Goodbye. Oh. Uh, we do not have a show next week because it's a holiday right. in the United States. So we will see you again in two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, and check happyjacks.org slash schedule for more information. Enjoy. Why problem make when no problem have you don't want to make. Okay, good. That's it. We're leaving. Goodbye. Retribution now 2020 drop inside